Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, I have a new camera here that I ordered from Player One Astronomy and I wanted to do a quick unboxing video. Uh, I pre-ordered it and I might be one of the first people to get it. I don't have a chance to use it probably for a couple of weeks but I wanted to do a quick unboxing to take a look at what we got. Look at some of the specs. I'm excited to use it. It's a planetary camera. I also ordered some filters with it. IR cut and infrared 685 nanometer. And here is the new camera. I want an astronomical camera, high sensitivity, high image quality, high speed. You're in a C IMX 585 camera. All right, let's get it opened. So this camera is designed primarily for planetary. Imaging can also be used for EAA. It has um, a number of advantages over earlier sensors. It's based on Sony's IMX585 chip sensor, and um, I guess you pull it right out here. And uh, this is the latest Starvis uh, 2 sensor. So they are, uh, Player on Astronomy is the first to, got some cables here, USB 2, this is a SD4 cable, uh, little hex Allen keys, four of them, that's interesting. Here is the camera, it's nice packaging, it's actually a pretty nice box, it's a little bit smaller than the ASIs. Here is the camera. These uh, little set screws wasn't screwed in all the way. Shouldn't be a problem. This is the tilt mechanism. So I guess I <laughs> will go ahead and open these up. Figure out what, which one of these, which one of these works. Found the right one. I'm just going to put it in snug. Okay, so unlike ASI cameras from ZWO, these are hexagonal in shape, but otherwise they're really quite similar. Uh, they may have more similarities than differences. Um, USB 3 and SD port on one side, nothing else to connect. Uh, there is the sensor. It's a relatively large sensor when it comes to planetary cameras. Now it's uh, could be used for DSOs, but I don't think that's its primary um, market. Uh, the sensor is 4K in resolution, has a 2.9 micrometer uh, pixel size, and. The size is called one slash 1.2 inches, which is sort of a, a weird, uh, an old fashioned way of talking about sensor size. So IMX 585, one slash 1.2 inches, 12 bit sensor, 8.3 megapixel, player one astronomy. So my goal with this is to use it for planetary imaging, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, you know, the others that I don't do as often. Um, and in fact, it's namesake Uranus. I, I love taking pictures of the moons of Uranus, especially. Um, 
a couple of interesting things about this particular sensor, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a later video at some point, and I'm going to compare it to this one. This is the ZWO ASI 485MC, which is, you might want to call it the predecessor. The 585 uh, has, they share a lot of similar, uh, similar things. They're both 8.3 megapixel. They both have 2.9 micrometer um, uh, pixel size. They're both 12-bit. They're both the exact same size, 4K resolution. Um, I think this one is 47 frames per second. I think this one is a little bit less. That's something that Player One does. They talk about th these three uh, things can be used to tilt it, which is not very useful, I don't think, in planetary, but it can be useful for solar imaging to get rid of Newton's rings. Um, but this being a color camera, I'm not planning on using it for solar. I have a monochrome camera for that, but with a global shutter. But um, sensor size, if you can see down in there, should look identical. You know, it's ironic. I, I bought this used on cloudy nights, and I haven't actually used it. Planetary season isn't, hasn't arrived yet. And I have the, the one and a quarter inch nose for this, but um, so I haven't even got a chance to use my old one. I already bought a new one. So, but I'm excited for this. This has uh, a couple of features here that I think are standout features. And that being um, the well depth of this is 13,000 electrons. Uh, this is 38,800, so it's significantly larger. The same 0 0.7 uh, read noise. Um, this doesn't have any amp glow. That's a big seller. Uh, EAA people, uh, you know, they want to just take some quick images and less issues with, uh, well, you wouldn't have to take darks as, as much, um, but it's a cleaner image. Um, what's not really discussed as much, I think, is this sensor is more sensitive in infrared than this one. Uh, the uh, IMX 462 sensor was very popular. Um, it's a little bit smaller sensor than this. Actually, it's one fourth the size of this. It's used for planetary. I have that camera as well, and it's got, giving me great shots. It's very sensitive in infrared, um, but I think I was going to. I was planning on replacing that camera with this because I don't use infrared that much. If I did. Uh, and when I when I, I have and when I do use it, I use an infrared filter. But this camera is not quite as sensitive in infrared as the 462, um, but almost. And it is four times larger. It's easier to frame your target, especially using Barlow's at high focal lengths. Um, also, I like to get moons, so you get more field of view if you want to capture, you know, half a dozen or more moons of Saturn, for instance, you know, six or eight in the same frame. Uh, to get nine moons, that would be, they would have to have a pretty large field of view. So I actually think, this is my prediction, I think that this is going to work out well enough that I'm actually going to sell this one and my ASI 462 off and use this as my primary uh, planetary camera. And it will just have the best of everything. Infrared capability, Large focal length, uh, large field of view, uh, high high resolution, uh, good color balance. I don't know that that's any better than this, but this one is supposed to have very very good color balance. In fact, perhaps a little bit better than um, the 462. So, anyway, uh, I am looking forward to testing these, and I just wanted to do a a brief overview and an unboxing video. So. Uh, there you have it. Can't wait to try them.